Welcome to the Definitive XSplit Guide. In this video, I will show you everything from start to streaming. First off, download and install XSplit. You can get it at xsplit.com. Down here, you'll just fill out uh, information to set up an account. And then down here, you will click the button to download XSplit. The next thing you're going to want to do is go to speedtest.net and do a speed test to a location near you. I've already done this, and these are my results. The upload came out a little bit low on these results, but it will be fine for what we're doing today. All right. Now I'm going to open XSplit and we'll get started. You're going to need an account with a stream provider such as Twitch.tv or Own.tv. If you don't have one, pause the video and go get one now. It's free. The first thing we need to do is set up the basic settings. To do that, I'm going to go to Tools, General Settings, and then the General tab. The first item here is disable arrow theme. In almost all cases, you want to have this checked. The next item you're going to see is enable virtual camera output. You basically, you want to have this off. The only reason you would use this is if you want to use XSplit as a camera or a source for another piece of software, but most of the time XSplit does everything you need. The next item you're going to see is enable game source. This is for licensed users who want to directly hook into games. I'm not going to be streaming any games right now, so I have it unchecked, though you might want to check it. The next item is hide from screen region. This is to hide the XSplit GUI, or graphical user interface, from the stream or recording. All right. I use two monitors and have XSplit on a second monitor, so I don't need to do this. The last item is enable Skype interaction. Uh, keep this unchecked. Currently it's broken, but I believe in version 1.1 or version 1.2 this will be fixed and uh, completely revamped. Next is the audio section. Here you would set your microphone, and I've already done this, as you can see. And then below it there's silence detection. Uh, this feature allows the software to detect when your microphone is silent and turn it off. I don't use this, but I do know, you know, some have some friends that do use it, and they've said it works great. Uh, under my recordings, the location here, this is where you're going to set the location for your uh, local recordings to be saved. Uh, if you plan on doing any sort of local recordings or, you know, having uh, vods of your streaming, then you definitely want to set this location. Next, you could press OK. I'm going to press Cancel though. Uh, the next thing we need to do is set up the channel itself. But before we do that, we need to figure out what settings to put. So for that, I'm going to reference Table 1 of the written guide. And here under Table 1, this is basically going to show you uh, what your CPU is capable of. Uh, it's going to show your CPU, the resolution in FPS, which is recommended, or that you're, rather your CPU is capable of, the preset, and quality number. These are all settings you'll be putting in the XSplit channel settings. All right. uh, unfortunately, we don't have all the CPUs on the market here. We only have the ones that I or the co-author Technical Monkey own. Uh, so here, the CPU I have right now and I'm using is an overclocked i7-3930K. So it can do 1080p at 60fps on preset fast at quality number 10. So we'll take mental note of that. The next table to take a look at is table two. This basically is going to show us what our speedtest.net upload result came out to and what bitrate we want to stream you know, in XSplit at or what bitrate is recommended to stream at. Uh, my result in speedtest.net again was 4.46 megabit. Uh, normally it's about 5 or 5.5. But uh, so for that I could stream roughly about 3,000 or 3,500. Uh, today I'll be using less than that for the content that I'll be streaming on the channel that I'll be setting up. The next table we're going to take a look at is the last table, table number three. Table number three basically takes the bitrate that we just you know, saw in table two and recommends a resolution and FPS to go along with that bitrate. So for the bitrate I have I could do 1080p at 60 FPS but uh, or 45 FPS, but I'm actually going to be doing 1080p at 30 at roughly this bit rate. All right. Now that uh, we've seen that, we're going to go back to XSplit and we're going to set up the channel. 
So to do that, you can go under Tools, General Settings, but the easiest way is to go to pro uh, Broadcast, Edit Channels. Now under here, I'm going to click Add, and it's at Twitch TV, so I'm going to click Twitch TV. And the first thing we're going to fill out is the channel name. The channel name is Twig TV. You want to put it all in lowercase regardless of the case that you set up your channel in. Now once I click here to password, it's automatically going to fill out the channel name here. All right. I'm going to enter in my password. And the next thing we need to fill out is location. This is basically the ingestion server that you're going to upload to. You want to set a location near you so that you have a good connection to it. You're not experiencing lag on the stream or whatnot. So for me, uh, I'm going to choose US West, Los Angeles, California. All right. The next thing to set is the preset. Now the preset allows you to choose how much CPU processing is used for your stream or recording. The best setting for most people is very fast. So I'm going to set very fast. Very fast, basically all around, great performance and it looks great. Um, in the advanced guide, we will cover you know, other presets, custom presets where you basically set the arguments to the encoder yourself. Uh, but for now, just use very fast. Uh, the quality the quality is the number that relates to the definitive bitrate. So the higher this number is, the higher the quality. The lowest uh, you can set this to is 0, and the highest is 10 for live streams. When you do a local recording, you can set this up to 20. So for me, I'm going to be using quality 10. Now for the max bitrate and buffer here, all right? First of all, these two numbers correlate. You want to have them as the same, so it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Uh, for this, we're going to reference back to what my speedtest.net results were, and that was like 4.46 megabit, which in Table 3 recommended to me about uh, 3,500, I believe, uh, roughly, or maybe even 3,800, something like that. But I'm going to be doing much less. I'm only going to be doing 2,500, 2.5 megabit. The reason for this is the content on this channel, it's a... Um, a gaming talk show type of deal with webcams and interview people and such so uh, 2500 is plenty uh, the next field we see is resolution uh, this is basically for advanced use and you don't want to change this leave this at default stage resolution in the advanced guide we will cover scenarios where you would want to use this but those scenarios are very limited um, the next thing is the resize method this you know is tied in with the resolution uh, and again you know don't change that. Uh, audio encoding. The format is the basic setting for audio encoding. In almost all cases you want to use 44.100 kilohertz 16-bit stereo which is what I have selected here. All right. For codec if you're an XSplit licensed user you definitely want to use AAC LC. If you're just using the free version though you'll be restricted to Speaks codec. You know, I apologize in advance for that. Uh, for bitrate here I normally put 128,000, but if you have 1.5 megabit or less upload, uh, you might want to conserve a little bit of bandwidth and set this to 96,000. But for me, I'm going to put 128,000. The next thing we see is automatically record broadcast. You always want to have this checked off. Uh, if you ever want to do a local recording, uh, you basically will want to use the local recording profile and not this checkbox. All right. The next thing is interleave audio and video in one R RTMP channel. For this, you definitely want to have it on. All right. Now, before I click OK here, the last thing we're going to do is a little bit of uh, a test. All right. Uh, an ingestion, excuse me, ingestion server speed test. All right. So to do this, the best method to do this is to set your bitrate to your maximum upload speed. So for me, if that's five megabit or 5,000 kilobit, right? And of course, the buffer changes automatically. Now I'm going to click Test Bandwidth. It immediately starts doing a speed test. Now I will tell you, on a second computer, I do have uh, an upload to YouTube going, so the speeds are probably going to be really bad here. But either way, I want to show you guys uh, what happens. As you can see here, the, the speeds are quite low. I'm getting like one megabit or less. Which, if you ever got this, I mean, that means that you have a really bad connection. 
to the to the server. And of course you can change what server you're testing up here. So what you'd want to do is to test multiple of these servers and then use the one that you get the highest speed to. That's why we're doing the test like this is to see what the highest speed is that you can get. Alright, so we'll take note of the speed and up here on the top right it's red. Because I set the bitrate to 5000 and buffer to 5000, my maximum upload speed, almost always, or pretty much always, this is going to come out red. Ignore it. What you're taking note of is the speed down here at the bottom. So I'm going to close this. What you would have done is tested multiple and taken the highest speed. And then at the end, when you're done speed testing, change this back to the bitrate you want to stream at. So for me, that's 2500. Uh, now we're going to press OK. And then apply and okay now the last thing you need to set up here for your stream settings is the resolution and FPS to do that that's up here at view resolution Ooh. view resolution and I already have 1920 by 1080 selected now all these other uh, resolutions you see these are like defaults set up in XSplit if you want to change what's listed here you can just come down here to the bottom at edit resolutions and there are a plethora of resolutions you can choose from to add it to the list you just literally check and it will add it to the list you can also down here at the bottom press add and put in any custom resolution if you don't see the resolution you want and you can add a name for it All right, but for me I'm fine with the resolution so view resolution I already have 1920 by 1080 selected which is 1080p the next thing is frame rate Normally on my main channel, I stream at 60 FPS, but for this channel, I want to do 30 FPS. If you want to stream at any custom FPS, or frame rate rather, frame rate per second, uh, you can just click here at the top and you can set in any custom rate. All right, so we have 30 FPS selected. The next thing is transition. Uh, this is basically transitions when you're changing scenes. Uh, there's all different effects you can play with them you can also come down here to transition speed and change how fast these effects uh, occur the last thing here is projector uh, projector will cover more in the advanced guide but its basic use is that if you have a projector or a second monitor that you want to use as an output uh, instead of streaming or additionally to streaming you can set that up here and it'll output everything that would be seen here in the preview window all right. Uh, the last thing again is scale viewport. Now, this basically allows you to save desktop space. If I put this at actual, it would take up my whole desktop right now. But because I have it at 40%, it's only showing a uh, reduced size. Now, there's a myth going around that any higher than 10% will use more CPU resources. So people have recommended that everyone runs uh, this at 10%, which is very small, and you can't really see what's going on in your stream. Uh, I want to make the you know set the record straight. This is completely false. So set the scale viewport to whatever size you want. I prefer 40%. Uh, so yeah. All right now you've got your channel pretty much all set up and ready to be streamed to. You just need to add something to your scene scene that you want to stream. All right. So I'll show you a couple things. Here's under add. This is where you're going to add sources. There's add camera. And these are different cameras. Of course, these are from DX Tori, which is an application to hook it into into games. Uh, Google Camera Adapter. I believe these are like uh, Google Hangouts cameras. And of course, my webcam. You can also add any sort of media file. I'll show you one real quick. It's just my stream logo. Now, a little trick: anytime you're on any source on your scene, you can press the number one on your keyboard, and bam, it goes to full screen. All right, but of course you can always resize this to what you want. Uh, there's also more settings you can go through by clicking settings on any source and you can change all sorts of stuff. So colors even, darkness, brightness, whatever. So uh, also if you have a if you have a source that you want to temporarily remove, you can just click this checkbox and it goes away or click it back and it comes back and of course to permanently remove it you just click it and press remove some other sources you can add is uh, screen region this is part of your desktop I can come over here to the left and draw out a box that I want to add let's say and it adds it or if I just click an open empty space on my desktop it will add the whole thing 
as you can see here. And again, I'm going to press 1, and bam, it's added to full screen. Uh, remove that. Uh, you can also add an IP camera. That's basically uh, essentially a webcam that's hooked up on the network and can be accessed by the IP. Most people don't have these, so I'm sure to most of you that does not apply. Add video playlist is a nifty uh, add-on here that you can basically add any sort of media content, uh, videos, images, music, and do it in a playlist. There's also add title. This is where you can add something like uh, I'm away from keyboard, be, be back in 20 minutes, let's say. Now you can add this here. But let's say it's actually too big to fit. It doesn't all completely fit, and I actually want it larger. You can actually come here into the settings and set up scrolling. And I'll put it on fast. Press OK. Bam. Now it scrolls. This is great for any sort of message you want on your stream. I'm going to remove that. Down here you can also add a live stream. Make sure you have access to any content you're adding. You don't want to run into any sort of copyright infringement or whatnot. You can also come down here to more sources and the source plugin store. You can find uh, some other you know plugins that you can add in for sources. One of them here is Starboard made by Ascend. It's actually a StarCraft II scoreboard uh, plugin. It's great. Uh, you can use it for other games as well. And uh, yeah, definitely great work to Ascend. So I'm going to close that and that's pretty much it as far as adding content goes now the last thing I want to cover in this video guide is the hotkeys alright setting up hotkeys is really important for anyone that's going to be streaming a lot so to do that go here to tools general settings and then the hotkeys tab alright as you can see here I've already set up a hotkey for some uh, for some of my scenes and I even have them labeled you know F5 F6 so I already know what that is and it's control alt f5 and you basically to set one you just come over here the drop down box and you can select pretty much anything on your keyboard All right, and then uh... that's that so you definitely want to set up i'd recommend setting up at least a couple scenes uh... and also down here at the bottom <clears throat> setting up uh... setting up a hotkey for uh... turning on or off your stream so that about sums everything up for this video guide. Again, we are working on an advanced guide that will be for all the stream savvy users to really take things to the next level. We're going to cover a lot of stuff in that and it will probably be much longer. Uh, if you found this video not from the text version of this guide, I highly recommend that you go check out the text version of this guide, which will be at uh, the bottom of this video. All right. Again, uh, I'm APOC TV, and that guide can be found at APOCTV.com. Now, if you need any help with XSplit beyond this, you can tweet me at APOC TV on Twitter, or there's also an XSplit IRC channel. You can find out information to that at the bottom of the written guide. Um, again, any other information that you need, you can find at XSplit.com. Thank you so much for watching this guide, 